My Safety Training presents Dealing with Heat Stress. What you will learn. We'll give an introduction to heat stress, including statistics on the problem, a major types of heat stress, how the body cools itself, factors affecting the body's cooling ability, a discussion of heat stress, a discussion of heat the heat index temperature chart. Part 1, Introduction to Heat Stress. Since 1936, according to the National Safety Council, 30,000 people have died of heat-related illnesses. On average, about 384 people die each year in the United States from heat stroke. Heat-related injuries seem to occur often with the elderly, people who are not in good physical condition, or not acclimatized to the heat. Part 2. Generating Body Heat. Let us count the ways. Ways to generate body heat are basically divided into two main ways. Metabolic heat. The body generates heat through the digestion of food, work, and exercise. Or environmental heat. The body absorbs heat from the surrounding environment, whether it's hot sun or hot room. Part 3. Understanding the body's cooling systems. There are three methods in which our bodies can be cooled. Convection is the transfer of heat through the circulation of air. Evaporation is the process which occurs when liquid changes into a vapor. And lastly, radiation. Heat is naturally emitted from the body's surface. Conditions affecting the cooling system. Acclimation is the biological process by, through which our bodies adapt to the environment, basically getting used to the heat. Air temperature is the heat flowing from warmer objects to cooler objects. Air movement moves the air speeds and speeds the evaporation process. Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air which affects the rate of evaporation. Clothing, the type of clothing affects the amount of heat our bodies absorb. Darker color clothing will absorb more heat than lighter color clothing. Also, our body weight and physical conditions affect your cooling system. Part 4, Health-Related Heat Problems. The heat rash is known as a prickly heat. It occurs in hot, humid environments where sweat can easily evaporate from the skin. This condition produces a rash which in some cases causes severe pain. The procedures to prevent or minimize this condition are to rest frequently in cool places and bathe regularly ensuring that to thoroughly dry the skin. Heat cramps are painful muscle spasms that result in the loss from a loss of salt and electrolytes due to excessive sweating. The cramps will usually affect the stomach, the arms, and the legs. This condition can be treated by drinking fluids which contain electrolytes such as calcium, 
sodium potassium. It is a condition which usually precedes heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion is a state brought on by the loss of fluids caused due to excessive sweating. Individuals with heat exhaustion still sweat, but they experience extreme weakness and may even collapse. They may experience nausea and a headache. Their skin is clammy and moist. Their complexion is usually pale. The body temperature can be normal or slightly higher. Heat exhaustion explained. My fellow revolutionaries, this condition is best treated by treat taking the patient to a cool place, applying some cool compresses, elevating the feet, and giving the individual plenty of fuel, fluids. Heat stroke is a severe medical emergency which could result in death. Heat stroke results in the body's core temperature getting too high and the body is no longer able to cool itself. An individual suffering from heat stroke will have hot, dry skin, their pulse will be high, and their blood pressure will fall. Heat stroke explained. This condition must be treated immediately, cooling the, body's victim, the victim's body with water or wrapping them in cool, wet sheets immediately seeking medical attention. Health-related heat problems explain. Of course, acclimation, accustoming yourself to the weather prior to long durations of physical activity, is one way of dealing with heat-related heat problems. Maintaining your body fluids. Fluid intake must be maintained throughout a course of physical activity. Do not rely on thirst as an indicator of dehydration because your body loses water faster than you realize. Alcohol should be avoided as a because it is a diuretic which increases dehydration and can interfere with heat loss. How do we deal with Heat-related health problems? Well, proper diet, eating light, and staying away from heavy foods. They increase the, heavy, the metabolic heat production and also increase water loss. Rest periods, of course, pacing your work activities at a slower rate during high temperature times. Taking frequent rest periods to a shaded area and drinking plenty of fluids. Here we can see the heat index chart, the humidity to temperature, which shows that as the humidity goes up and the temperature goes up, the danger to individuals increase. Obviously at 90 degree heat with 80 degree humidity, you have a much higher level of danger than at 10% humidity. Adjusting your work procedures should depend upon the temperature and the humidity. Let's give you a little chart here to show how you can do this. Here we can see at temperatures exceeding 130 degrees, extreme danger is the rule of thumb. Anyone trying to work in this environment suffers, can have, suffer immediate heat, heat stroke. Employees should be dismissed and no work should be done during this period. In the window of 105 to 129, there is danger. Heat cramps and heat exhaustion are likely. Heat stroke is possible. When heat index is in this zone, no critical work activities should be conducted. Critical work activities which need to be done should be evaluated and scheduled with affected employees having adjustments made.
When temperatures between 91 degrees and 104 exist, extreme caution should be the rule. Heat cramps and heat exhaustion are possible with prolonged activities. When heat index is in this zone, management should discuss the making a schedule adjustment to accommodate for the heat. Specific approval must be granted for working under these types of extreme work conditions. During temperatures of 77 to 90 degrees, caution only should be the rule and fatigue is possible. A normal workday can be conducted. Thanks for participating from MySafetyTrainingOnline.com.